Hey friends, it's Liza. Today we're gonna draw a dragon. A dragon was a suggestion from an awesome artist online. So I'm super glad that their mom messaged me and said, my kid wants to learn how to draw a dragon. Now this is just my version of a dragon, but if you see a dragon in a book or there's one in your mind that you'd rather draw, you can practice with me and then practice drawing your own dragon. I really love dragons. Today I'm gonna draw a dragon with some pointy eyebrows down that show he's kind of mad. And I wanted to talk to you about that feeling for a minute. Um, you know, there are days when my kids get mad or I get mad or Mr. Jeremy gets mad. And most of the time we have to walk away and kind of cool off. And sometimes when I walk away to cool off, I go make some art. You can make art anytime, anywhere, whatever feelings in your head. And my art when I'm mad looks kind of different than my art when I'm happy. But there's so many famous artists that got good at what they did <clears throat> because they practice art no matter how they were feeling. So I wanted to encourage you to do the same. Um, and then after we have our quiet time, stepping away from a problem, we come back to it and our hearts changed a lot. So um, sometimes we have to ask for help too with that. But I hope that y'all are having a great morning or afternoon or night, whatever time it is that you're watching this. And I'm really happy you're here. And let's go make some dragons. Here we go. I'm starting with a pencil, just like you guys, most likely, so I can erase any mistakes I make. Miss Liza makes mistakes all the time. All right, we're gonna draw a pretty big dragon. So I want you to either take your finger or an eraser, go to the middle and then a little bit to the left, around right here. This is where his head's gonna go. So we're gonna start with two humps and then a straight line and two smaller humps. What do you think that's gonna be? His head. We're gonna take a line down, go across, and stop where this first line was. We're gonna do an open mouth dragon. Do you see what I did? You can slow it down and pause it if you need to. Then we're gonna take a long curved line for his body. <coughs> Then we're gonna go on and do his haunch. His haunch will start about here at this dot. And well, let's go a little bit up actually. See, Miss Liza makes mistakes, but I have an eraser. We're gonna do this. We're gonna come and do a little curve line and then we're gonna meet back up with that. Do you see what I did? Looks kind of like a hat. Then what we're gonna do is connect his neck and his big haunch with the curved line. And then we've got to add his front two claws. Because he has little hands like a Tyrannosaurus almost. Then guess what we need? We're going to go on and add his back leg too. Like this. Curve line, straight, straight, straight. And obviously he needs a big dragon tail. Look at his head. It looks, see how I made the letter S? You could come down, up and then down. And then you're gonna go down again. So it meets at a point right here. And this line, the space is more narrow than it is down here. Now he needs some eyes. I like his eyes just like that. But you can do this. Look, our head looks a lot like the alligator we drew last week. And if you didn't draw that, it's still on the blog. It looks a lot like an alligator. But we're going to make it a dragon. We're going to add some details that make it a dragon. <clears throat> now, he does need some scales. Just like an alligator. But instead of little humps, I'm adding little triangle scales. Do you know what I think he needs too is some fire. I'm gonna show you, and also I'm gonna make him angry 
just by adding two lines. Now yours doesn't have to be angry. You don't have to add the angry eyebrows. I'm gonna show you how to make fire though. You're gonna start with this shape right here, kind of an upside down V. And you're gonna come out and just make a bunch of squiggles, like he's breathing fire. And wherever you want the fire to start, this little point right here, you keep making the same kind of shapes. What colors are fire? <clears throat> Red and orange and yellow. Those are warm colors. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, it's easy to remember that artists refer to warm colors, refer red and orange and yellow um, as to warm, those are called warm colors because they remind us of fire. So that's pretty easy to remember. All right, here's your dragon. What could we add? We could add some little scales on his belly. You could add scales all over. You could add some more little toes and claws. Ah. <laughs> what could you add here? <clears throat> you could add little paws and claws if you wanted to. So what do you think? I think he's pretty happy. I'm gonna use my watercolor marker today and no, I'm gonna use my Sharpie. This will be fast forwarded and then we'll color it together. All right, you guys can color your awesome dragons, whatever you want to. You can use crayons or markers or paints. I did want to show you a technique we do a lot in the studio, which is a wax resist. You can actually use crayons for this too, as long as you press down super hard. But I'm going to fast forward it um, to where I color with my oil pastels. And then I'll show you what happens after we paint over it with tempera paint cakes. All right, here we go. Okay, I used oil pastels, and again, this works with wax crayons too, If you, as long as you press down super hard, if you want to use crayons instead of oil pastels. Crayons are made of wax, so if you paint over it with water paint, it's called a wax resist, but this is actually called an oil resist because guess what oil pastels are made of? Oil! And guess what we add to temper cakes to make it paint? water. So oil and water don't mix. So anytime you try to um, paint water, real watery paint over oil, the oil pushes it away. That's what resist means. Look at how much water I'm putting in my black paint. 
and I'm swirling around and around and around and around and around. I'm gonna test it right here. That's perfect. I want you to get so much water. You use your paintbrush almost like a, um, a shovel. You shovel it in and then watch. When we paint over the oil, I'm just gonna paint over it once, not a bunch. It pops out. This is still so magical to me, even after years of doing this. Now listen, if I get in a rush and I paint a lot, a lot, a lot over the oil, the oil um, pastel, it will kind of disappear. So you want to start with a really black, black from the beginning. So I'm going to paint my sky black. And I'm gonna fast forward all of this for you guys. Ta-da!